The following is meant for entertainment and educational purposes. It is not meant to establish a doctor-patient relationship. Please consult your mental health provider for your mental health needs. Hello, welcome to Shea Arik, my home, where we talk about psychiatry and religion with a focus on how to apply it to your life. And today we will be talking about William James and we will be continuing his lecture series. We finished lecture one last time, so we're gonna continue with lecture two today. Lecture two is pretty exciting. Well. I'll be honest, it's not, it's not that exciting. It's just, uh, he calls it circumscription of the topic. Basically, we're trying to define what is religion. What is the topic at hand when we're talking about the religious experience? So the first thing, you know, William James tries to figure out is to just say that understanding religion and creating a, a single definition for religion is very, very challenging. And I want you to take a little bit of time to try to think, what would your definition of religion be? How would you define religion? He makes comparison to governments to say that, you know, governments are very, very complex when we think about government. How would you define a government? There are monarchies that have a single person at the head and they make all the decisions. There are democracies where there's a bunch of people who, who have a big voting system and then they decide who's in charge and who are the people who are in charge and they make decisions as a group. There are in-betweens like republics, where right? You vote for people who will represent you. There are also oligarchies. There are dictatorships. It's kind of like a monarchy, but it's kind of worse. And then there are other different types of government. What specifically would be a really good definition of government to encompass all of these things? Religion is very similar. I mean, we have religions with many gods, one god. There are different rituals generally. There are different things that people do in order to gain favor or not favor, different ways of prayer, different times of prayer, different food restrictions. And some religions don't even have any of these things. Some religions are much more fluid and there isn't a lot to, to very specific rules and, and things like that. So what specifically can we define as religion? Some people may have a tendency to look at the, what he calls, William James kind of says, religious sentiment. It's sort of, you, you feel this thing, especially when we're talking about the religious experience. What does it mean to experience something in a religious sense? And so William James talks about this idea of religious sentiment. But he says that religious sentiment isn't really all that helpful because we might liken it to being, let's say, very serious or joyfulness during worship. When you, when you worship God, you feel happy, and then that would be a religious experience, right? A lot of people would, would say there's a religious experience there. Or maybe feeling really sad and in despair and in that difficult time, you're interacting with God. That also could potentially be a religious experience. And liken it to religious sentiment. Maybe religion is really just about the, the, the mood, the sentiment you have for this particular thing. But William James doesn't really go that direction. Instead, what he says is that religious sentiment is really nothing more than just having an emotion with a religious topic or religious object. So happiness and religious happiness, right? Uh, religious happiness would really just be happiness with religion attached to it and no different than happiness from, let's say, eating really good ice cream. Now, it's not to say that eating really good ice cream is the same as worshiping God, but it's to say that the emotion that we ascribe to eating really good ice cream is the same emotion, but maybe less of intensity when the object is an ice cream instead the object is God. So that the happiness we feel is very similar to the happiness we would have with religion. It's just that eating ice cream isn't as profound as believing God. And the same would go for sadness. The sadness we feel, let's say, breaking up with somebody or losing a relationship wouldn't be as profound as something that one would interact with God or as some sort of existential or religious sort of sadness. And same for anger and righteousness and all of these things. So he says, no, 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 no. Um, this is really the, the sentiment, the idea of this feeling that you just know it, right? It's, that's not what we're trying to get at when we talk about religion. That's just a religious object to this, just know it. And instead, he says that we should really, you know, go deeper and try to find a definition. So before I get into definition, I want to ask you, what is your defini definition of religion? What definition of religion would you personally have? I want you to really take the time to think about it. And then we're going to talk about 
you know, how he goes into the topic and see if it matches, see what it is. So I hope you enjoyed that. Do like and subscribe. I'm going really slowly, smaller videos. So I hope you're enjoying that so that we you know, you really like chew it really nicely. So if you like it, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know. I'll do whatever you need me to do. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Guess what? I just finished the first edits of my book. And now I'm going to send it over to actual professional editors. And after that's done, and I have to do other steps. And then I'll finally publish it soon. So yeah, just updating you. It's a work in progress. I will keep you updated. Thanks for staying tuned.